Uh, and of course, we weren't going to be current, that current. You know, we weren't going to. Um, uh, a month or so ago, Robert Rauschenberg, the artist, uh, died. You know, uh, all of a sudden, blog posts were coming up, you know, us talking about Robert Rauschenberg. We didn't publish a story on Robert Rauschenberg for a month uh, after he died. And what we tried to do is we tried to. Uh, create a blog post that connected him with the museum. Uh, we gave him his first one-person show in 1976. Uh, we interviewed uh, somebody uh, who uh, brought a lot of the avant-garde in the 1960s to Washington. We included that in the story. So if we're not being uh, current and if we're not being controversial, how are we going to get uh, comments? Well. Uh, since our initial blogger, uh, the one uh, who we hired when we first started uh, blogging, who had a blogging experience and had an art historical background, most of his stories were more art criticism, and we realized that uh, that may not be the best uh, style for, um, for drawing people in. We uh, recently, at the uh, beginning of this year, we hired a new blogger who actually has no, uh, or had no blogging experience, but he had a lot of experience writing from a personal point of view, uh, a personal narrative. And what he has done is he has created um, a connection between his personal reflections about the artworks in our museum uh, and, and himself. Uh, and so essentially, it's good storytelling. And so I would add to, to uh, the two things that create successful blog posts, currency and controversy, that accessible writing uh, will help uh, draw people in. And as a way of proving this, uh, our, the number of comments from uh, January to June uh, of this year was 300% more than the same period last year. It was actually 324%, but when I kept repeating that exact uh, uh, percentage, uh, people thought you know, that uh, I was trying to pile it on. So I just said 300%. So, um, uh, oh, the one other uh, statistic that I thought was really important is, again, from January to June, uh, iLevel sent 71,000 visitors from iLevel to our main <coughs> blog, uh, to our main website, and I think that's important to show that we are bringing people into our main website. So iLevel has become a platform for highlighting our very content. It's part of our long tail strategy, and in fact, uh, we've actually written. Uh, a couple times over the uh, over the years about a particular uh, part of our museum. So we can go back uh, to we, we created a uh, a website for children uh, called Meet Me at Midnight about uh, children that go into the museum when it's closed at night and uh, discover an artwork that has come alive. And, uh, and so when we first published that. Uh, we did a blog post about it, but then we realized uh, that we could bring it back again because they're filming a, a, a new uh, film. I don't know if you, what was the name of the film uh, a couple years ago uh, yeah. about a, um, a, a museum at night where yeah. things come alive? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. what is it? Okay. Well, anyway, they're doing they're doing a sequel. They're doing a sequel, and uh, and this time it's the Smithsonian that's part of this. So you know, it was like at night the Smithsonian you know comes alive, and so we were able to reconnect our um, uh, that story about me at midnight about our kids' uh, a website. Uh, uh, you know, uh, two years later. Uh, so again, we can just keep going back and back, back and forth whenever, uh, whenever it seems appropriate to do. So um, uh, I should also say that we're now beginning to experiment with Twitter. Everybody knows what Twitter is? Yeah, see? Um, 
And uh, one of the things that we don't want to do is we don't want to use new technologies just for its own sake. We want to use it if we find a reason to use it. And so uh, what we decided is, is that our uh, Lutter <coughs> Conservation Center uh, is uh, has no schedule and they, uh, you know, whenever they decide that they're going to work on an artwork, they start working. Yet people don't know, the visitors, our visitors to the museum don't know when they're actually working. So sometimes they come to the, uh, to the Lunder Conservation Center and nobody is there and nothing is happening. So just last week, we, uh, uh, I got uh, the, the center, the Lunder Center on Twitter, they have their own account, and they are posting uh, uh, tweets. They are posting uh, little Twitter uh, posts. Uh, I'm about to start working on this artwork now. So people are starting to follow uh, uh, our, con our conservators, and there are a lot of conservation groupies who really are into conservation. A lot of them who uh, live in D.C. and want to know, you know, when can I see somebody working on artwork? But what we're also trying to do is we're trying to take Twitter and actually connect it to our lobby screens uh, in the lobbies of our museum so uh, that when they post uh, a little Twitter uh, post, the uh, visitors coming into the museum can see, ah, you know, they're working on an artwork now, let's go up and see them do that. So we think that's a really good use of technology, of Twitter uh, specifically. This was a blog post that I did at uh, the end of last year. This photograph is a close-up of one of our folk art pieces called Bottle Cap Giraffe. And uh, I found this on Flickr, this photograph. Uh, it's a giraffe that's made entirely of bottle caps. Uh, and so somebody took a close-up of it and I published this on the blog. And uh, a viewer wrote a comment saying that he was so inspired by this that he decided to create his own uh, artwork with bottle caps and he posted this on his own blog. And this is exactly the type of interaction that we want between our museum and our viewers. People who are inspired by looking at our art uh, and take it one step further, and of course, document it. And this is really good to show our director because it shows that you know we're reaching out and we're connecting uh, with our viewers. <coughs> so, um, let's see. Uh, we're still we're still trying to determine. Uh, and I think we'll never know exactly uh, why a blog post is so popular and why certain ones are popular and certain ones are not. On my own blog, all of a sudden, you know, I realize uh, that uh, a story has been picked up. Uh, and I just, you know, I, even though I've been, I've been blogging personally for almost nine years, uh, I still am surprised sometimes when uh, a blog post that I write connects with the, with the social network, the blogosphere.